first electronic computers. During the 1940s, the Mark series of computers were developed at Harvard University. The first of these computers, the Mark I, was put into operation in 1944 and was used until 1959. It stored at counted numbers mechanically using 3000 decimal storage wheels, 1400 rotary dial switches and 400 miles of wire but transmitted and read the data electrically. It was programmed by punch cards, weighed 5 tons and could do a multiplication operation in about 6 seconds. Like the earliest mechanical computers, the data to be used in a mark computer was stored in a separate part of the machine from the instructions or program that would operate on the data also the instructions were stored in a different format the data it was in the 1940s however with the uh, impetus of the war and with the development of new technologies that what we know considered to be computers were really developed the techniques of storing data and instructions separately has become known as the Harvard architecture as we shall see even though this architecture has fallen out of the favor of modern computer system it is being revived inside many modern processes in the early 1940s a separate computer was developed at the university of uh, Pennsylvania using 18,000 vacuum tubes and 1,500 relays to move information through the medicine called the electronic numerical integrator and calculator. ENIAC, it was the first all electronic computer. ENIAC took many of its computing techniques from mechanical calculators. For example, it used an electronic version of a mesh to gears called a ring counter for doing addition doing this electrically electronically added the speed of the computer it could do 5000 addition per second or 357 multiplication per seconds ENIAC was also programmed by punch cards and switch setting and could read two numbers per second it took a day or two set up each new problem for the computer but it was hoped that something better would soon emerge the performance of the computers of the 1940s really improved in a fraction of seconds they performed calculations that would have required a week from teams of humans with adding machines but they were also huge machines requiring rooms of their own and major air conditioning system to keep their circuitry from overheating programming when was slow and complicated uh, and each machine was a unique device program could not be used or different computers from the 1940s to the 1960s computer designers worked at changing computer they water wanted smaller machines machines with interchangeable and easier to write programs they wanted more memory more speed and more power a major problem with early computer was the size of the components uh, which made the computer big, slow, hot and heavy. In the late 1950s, transistors, uh, the size of the vacuum tube came into use. They generated considerably less heat than vacuum tubes. And because electricity has to travel over a much shorter distance within where much faster, they could handle up to one lakh instructions per second computer memory also changed cathode ray tubes which stored information as charges on their faces were tried for a while but were eventually replaced by magnetic core storage movement of information in, into and out of such storage 
is comparatively slow but offer the most reliability for the time. These speed issues will resurface later when we examine the CISE and RISC computer architecture. The logical programs that ran the original computers were fed into the computers while the computers operated. Rolls of the paper were punched to uh, encode the zero and one the electronic machines could read and the run through the machine or bands of uh, switches were thrown into long patterns of um, zero and one the data the computers worked on on the other hand was inside the machine the inner rising counters for example were the physical representation of the number of the program where to manipulate in the mind 1940s john von newman showed that a computer instructions could be represented in the same language used for the data instructions and data could then be stored together within the computer the first computer to have this von newman architecture was the electronic discrete variable automatic computer which became operational in 1952. The von Neumann architecture has become the standard for modern computer system. Most computers seems to have some version of the architecture. In a typical von Neumann system, instructions and data are mixed together in the same memory, often with data following immediately after instructions. Instructions are just numbers and are not distinguishable from data. These instructions are known as the machine language of the system. Combining instructions and data in the same memory has several advantages including efficient use of memory. You have one large block that can be used any way you want instead of two smaller blocks. Computers can handle instructions as easily as data. Since instructions and data are stored together, moving blocks of instructions, that is programs around, become simple. Ease of loading programs into the memory just reads the instructions and data from disk or other long term storage and then executes the newly read information. Combining instructions and data in the same memory also has some disadvantages. Data can overwrite instructions without special hardware uh, precautions called memory protection. The incorrect write to memory could overwrite some instructions since one human system do not distinguish between instructions and data. The computer would attempt to execute the data as instructions usually with an under undesired result limited bandwidth storing instructions and data together means they both follow the same path to get to the processor this one human bottleneck means that the processor has uh, to trade off between executing a large number of instructions per second and reading in a large amount of data at the same time Later, in the CISE and RISC section of the chapter, we will see how modern designers are overcoming some of the program in the own human architecture. Low level languages. While one human systems deals easily with their machine language instructions, machine language is not an easy language for programmers to write and read. In the 1950s, assembly language was developed. Assembly language uses uh, monomic code such as add or addition that are easier to learn the remember than machine language and numeric codes. Uh, in assembly language, each instruction has a one-to-one -one correspondence to a uh, machine language instructions. Assembly languages require the use of assemblers program that translate assembly language into machine language. Since each processor 
has a unique set of machine language instructions. It also has its own assembler. This means that an assembly language program can only be written for one particular type of machine. Machine language and assembly language are called low level languages. Assembly language help the programs by allowing them to think using the name of each instructions instead of its binary uh, representation still writing even a simple program in such a low level language requires a large number of very simple instructions. This make writing of most assembly language program a time consuming task. Even though some programs developed large libraries of pre written routines, they could call on it, did not take away the basic problem. The programmer still had to write a significant amount of assembly language to connect the routines together, and the program was still only suitable for one type of machine. Something better was needed.